26 letters, 26 tips, tricks, and mini Photoshop tutorials. Today, we are covering the ABCs of Photoshop, going all the way from A to Z looking at tools, hacks, and settings, with all the featured resources being from Envato Elements. Get unlimited downloads of design assets, templates, and fonts with Envato Elements. Millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing. And you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now with the link down in the description. We have a whole alphabet of Photoshop effects to get through, so let's get started. A is for the actions that can automate anything from simple processes like saving and exporting images to creating instant works of art in under 5 minutes. Using actions is a breeze. Download the action onto your computer, load actions into the actions panel, hit play, and then watch them go. Grab this premium pixel art creating action over on Envato Elements. B is for brushes. You can turn almost anything into a brush just by converting that image into a grayscale. I like to use gradient maps. And then going to Edit, Define Brush Preset. Or, of course, you can download and import brushes using the Brushes panel. There are literally thousands of brushes that already exist, and I mean, can you really ever have too many Nebula Photoshop brushes? I think not. C is for Curves. If you need to add some quick contrast to your images, then the S curve is your new best friend. Go ahead and create a Curves Adjustment Layer. Now create an S shape on that curve line using just two anchor points. Instant contrast with flexibility thanks to it being an adjustment layer. D is for Filter Distort, the secret to planetary creation. Create whole planets by finding a planet-esque texture. NASA has a great free-to-use library for this if you want the real thing. Then use the elliptical marquee tool to make a circle selection on that texture. Go to Filter Distort Spherize, setting it to 100, and finally add a layer mask to the texture. You are now the proud owner of your very own planet. E is for the eyedropper tool. Did you know you can eyedrop a color from absolutely anywhere on your screen just by selecting the eyedropper tool and then dragging it to the area you want to color select? Yes, this even includes areas outside of Photoshop itself. No more screenshotting and then importing into Photoshop just to grab a color. F is for Flow Rate. Flow Rate is your secret weapon to both lighting and shadows. Lower the flow rate of a brush and then try to paint in a shadow. Each pass of the brush will lay down more and more paint, slowly building the shadow up, creating nice, smooth transitions. Flow works with both pen tablets and a good old mouse. G is for groups, and they do not get nearly as much love as they deserve. They keep your layers nice and tidy, which is a must when working with large image composites. And don't forget to color code them by right clicking the group, going all the way down to the bottom, and then choosing a color. H is for filter, other, high pass. Use the high pass filter to perfectly sharpen your images before posting them online. Flatten all of your layers, uh, size your image down to your desired size, duplicate the flattened image, set that image to overlay, go to filter other high pass, and then finally set the radius to 3 to 4 pixels. Bring out the detail with zero fear of over sharpening or artifacting. If you do need to lessen the sharpening effect, just lower the high pass layer's opacity. I is for iris blur. Filter blur iris blur adds instant depth to a photo. But did you know you can also add a bit of a light bokeh as well? Go to the effects tab, choose your light bokeh percent, bokeh color, and finally light range. The darker the photo, the more you'll want to slide that left slider to the left. J is for jitter. If you ever need a quick star brush, select a default hard round brush, open up the brush settings and increase the size and angle jitter to 100%. Next, the roundness jitter to 25% and finally increase the scatter to 100% as well. And then paint in your stars. K is for the frame tool, or it's a shortcut at least. Easily mask images using the frame tool. Create a frame, drop in an image, and then freely move around your image. 
Uh, double click the framed image to open it similar to a smart object. This is a great alternative if you don't want to mess around with clipping masks. L is for layer modes that are every artist's best friend. We already saw how they can sharpen an image when paired with our letter H, high pass, but we can also heat things up by adding a quick fire effect to any photo. No extraction needed. All you do need is a photo of a flame on a black background, and then change that layer mode to screen. Get all the drama of fire with none of the risk of burning down your building. M is for the marquee tool. Create perfect rectangles, squares, circles, and ovals with the marquee tools. You don't have to get the shape right the first time though. You can always hold shift to add to your selection and alt to remove from your selection. This is my go-to when I need to create a super simple moon shape. N is for noise. And while a lot of the time you may be desperate to get rid of it, adding a touch of noise to images will help add a realistic wash of grain, as well as get rid of annoying color banding. Create a layer filled with black, set that layer to screen, and add a small amount of noise. Place the layer between any layers that are causing the color banding. O is for opacity and fill. Ever wonder the difference between the two? One of the main differences is that opacity will affect the whole layer and everything on it, where fill won't affect any layer effects, which is great for creating a super simple, invisible-ish text effects. P is for the pen tool. If you love it, you love it. If you hate it, it's just because you haven't learned to love it yet. I love using the pen tool to make ultra accurate layer masks. Make sure to set the pen tool to path, make a path around a subject. Add a layer mask to that subject and then right click, fill path. Q is for Quick Selection, the tool you use when you're maybe a little too lazy to use the pen tool. Or maybe that's just me. Either way, the Quick Selection houses a little thing called Subject Select, Photoshop's most powerful AI selection tool yet. Just click and get a selection of almost any subject on a plain background, hair and all. R is for Refine Edge, the tool that will save your selection if Subject Select doesn't go as well as planned. Mask your selection and add a layer mask. Double click the layer mask and then choose Select and Mask. Check Smart Radius, setting the radius to about 3 pixels. Select the Refine Edge brush and then drag the brush across the edges of your subject. Watch your mask go from good to great. S is for Smart Objects, the tool that will keep you from ever having to commit to any filter, adjustment, or layer size. Smart Objects are also great for double layer masks. Create your first layer mask, right click, convert to Smart Object, and then add a fresh new layer mask to your now Smart Object. Access the original layer mask by double clicking the Smart Object layer. Never worry about ruining a layer mask ever again. T is for the Type Tool. Not only is downloading custom fonts basically a global pastime for most artists, but you can also add instant arches to those fonts using the Warp Text icon in the upper tool options bar. Choose a classic arch or get weird with it with the built-in Fish option. U is for the Shapes Tool. Hit U to quickly access your shapes. Create easy custom shapes by creating a design using multiple different shapes, like circles, and then select each shape layer and right-click Merge Shapes. They will be combined to form one shape that you can then add consistent layer styles to. Great for things like gradients and drop shadows. V is for Control V, and if you know your shortcuts, you know that means paste. A quick way to increase the intensity of any layer mode is to select the layer, Control c to copy, and then Control v to paste. Repeat until that glow meets your glowy standards. W is for Warp, and while there are many ways to warp an image, in Photoshop, my personal favorite is the Puppet Warp. Go to Edit, Puppet Warp on any extracted image, click to place the pins where you want to make your bends, and then just click and drag. The pins act as anchor points holding the bend unless moved. 
X is for Color Swap, the shortcut for swapping your foreground and background brush colors. All you have to do is hit X to quickly switch between your two colors. This is incredibly helpful when switching between white and black while masking, or combining two colors while you paint. Y is for the History Brush tool. Need to undo, but only in one particular area, then hit Y for quick access to the History Brush tool. You can even change the brush tip and size just like you would the normal brush tool. Great for when you're in a rush and don't want to mess around with adjustment layers and layer masks. Finally, Z is for Control Z. While Photoshop seems to think 25 undo states is enough, you can always go into the Edit Preference Performance to give yourself more, going as high as 1000. But no matter how hard I try, I can't seem to get Control Z to work in real life. And with the letter Z, we have come to the end of the ABCs of Photoshop. 26 different Photoshop effects, tips, and tricks. But if that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent videos that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. If you like this video and would like to see more, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and tutorials. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus. Happy designing!